Hello people, what is up? Welcome back to our channel. Once again, it's me, your bearded bro, Silver 15 back with another video. And today, we'll be reviewing probably one of the most controversial movies of this year, this month. The month of May. <laughs> and so all this controversy obviously started ever since the announcement of the cast for this movie. And of course, everybody was in shock. Uh, why did they pick this particular actor? actress for this role and everybody was just losing their mind and so the movie we're talking about is none other than Of course, we're talking about The Little Mermaid and of course, obviously, when the news came out, I was actually one of the doubters of this movie because obviously, maybe a lot of us are like gatekeepers almost since we all kind of want to protect our childhood memories and you know, when the announcement of Ariel actually being darker skin toned in color everybody was just shocked and most of them probably isn't because it's racist or anything but more on again trying to protect their childhood memories of Ariel being this white redhead but I'm here to say just straight out the bat that they actually made it make sense in this movie because obviously the main cartoon movie of The Little Mermaid, we weren't particularly given a setting of the world where it's located in our real world and here they actually made it make, make sense. The location of the uh, main characters are near the Caribbean Sea so her nationality makes sense in this movie and actually if anything uh, the odd one out or the whitewashed quote unquote character for this movie is probably Prince Eric because he is actually a white prince in a Caribbean shipping port trade route kingdom of sorts and but actually it was explained that he was adopted from a shipwreck web uh, long before he was a kid so it all kind of ties up also one other controversy regarding this movie is actually some of the <laughs> I don't know if you've heard but some of the Aladdin cast uh, actually were uh, tossing some shade <laughs> into the Little Mermaid saying that their movie w was better but actually and now <laughs> definitely the Little Mermaid is uh, a lot better than Aladdin in so many ways because uh, The Little Mermaid is actually one of good example of how to do a remake. Uh, let me explain. So uh, The Little Mermaid actually 80% of the movie was almost just straight cut from the original source material, the cartoon that we all know and love and they actually improved it and Hailey Bailey, uh, the actress for Ariel, actually did a great job performing the songs and everything and actually all the musical numbers were, were just on point for this movie and obviously I found myself singing along so imagine a grown ass man singing along to part of your world and it, this is actually the second day since we've seen that movie and it's still going in my head that just goes to show how well they did those scenes for this movie and actually they did add uh, a few more songs actually that so good as well so one for Prince Eric and one for Scuttle or Aquafina the, the seagull and yeah those songs were actually really catchy and of course uh, other notable songs are Sebastian's you know kiss the girl and the seaweed is always greener that, that song it, they also performed it really well uh, of course minus the fish performing it on musical instruments but it actually I think in this the live action movie actually did it better sort of almost they improved it since uh, from the original in my personal opinion so another notable character that I believe they improved in this live action adaptation is actually 
Prince Eric, they sort of gave him some backstory and they just made him more likable as a character. Of course, in the original cartoon, he was more just eye candy for Ariel. I mean, he never really did anything worthwhile and well, actually, he just, you know, saved her in the end. With that said, they actually switched up some roles of who did what in this version of The Little Mermaid and they actually gave more power to Ariel which uh, I think a lot of feminists and you know today with today's standards for writing women uh, actually is a plus but of course uh, there's this weird you know if you're an adult now you probably are questioning are you really in love you know <laughs> with with someone you met like five minutes ago <laughs> and yes that is still part of this movie but they actually you know tried to make up for it by adding some scenes of Eric actually well actually both of them kind of falling in love with each other getting to know each other even more in this film so they actually kind of tried to remedy that part although there was this one particular scene where which I will kind of nitpick which was so creepy and it actually didn't work in live action and I understand why they put it in because uh, you know that scene where, where Ariel just pushes herself up from the rocks and then uh, there's a big splash a big wave from behind and that is here and it, it is iconic but you know her leading up to that you know when Eric was stranded in the beach uh, she was creeping beside a rock and it totally gave up some stalkery crazy bitch vibes so it is weird it was weird so I think they could have cut at least the crawling part in the rocks watching from a distance an unconscious dude and then singing I soon I will be part of your world and it was quite creepy but with that said uh, most of it is was actually pretty good so some other notable characters was of course outstanding characters were actually Scuttle and Sebastian they just stole the show actually a sad thing for Flounder's character but sort of they, since they kind of wanted to slightly be on the re realistic side yes uh, giving more screen time to Scuttle and Sebastian who could have been more on land actually kind of made sense one thing though is that you know the character design for uh, Flounder I think was just terribly done the least they could do is kind of brighten up his color palette he was just gray it looks like a fish and he could be replaced with any of the other more colorful fish in the ocean yes I think Ursula was okay she was okay as a villain uh, again they kind of fell short with writing the villain but you know she was you know hateable likable you like to hate her <laughs> in the best way possible though I wish we could have gotten more backstory from her uh, although they tried giving her a bit of like sibling rivalry with Triton but with that said moving on to King Triton so one of the probably the weaker characters in this film was King Triton played by Javier Barden and he's been in a lot of films Pirates of the Caribbean and all that the villains he played before are actually more charismatic than the King of the Ocean so that's sad to see but he was more like always just on the side being watching and being sad about Ariel <laughs> and so that's mostly his character which was sad and I think they could have done more with the character King Triton but that said most of his scenes were taken directly or just a uh, copy paste from the original cartoon so one question though and I do get why they did this Ariel's sisters were all different nationalities now of course I get it it's for kids, it's for, it's for little girls and you want to make all the little girls all over the world like represented in mermaid form and they would think it was awesome and that's cool that's perfectly fine and I do believe that is a nice touch for the producers but you know as an adult you kind of question and at the beginning of the film where when the daughter all this well the six daughters of King Triton minus Ariel met together and I I thought oh King Triton probably has multiple wives across the seven seas and to me that was what made sense why everybody was a different nationality but then they go on to say that they only had one mother 
and it makes you think you know yeah, their mother got around <laughs> because I, I believe mermaid breeding physics actually is the same as fish or humans where when you breed with one breed it would look like the other so you know <laughs> pretty weird but you know if you think about it so I don't know <laughs> one other thing that I probably I would like to talk about this movie is the visuals and uh, it was just so stunning I love how they did all the water scenes it actually looked very beautiful although you know, I don't know maybe of course obviously we have to compare it to Avatar Way of the Water and it's a toss-up between the two although I do have to say that there are some scenes where the tracking uh, I obviously since I do have some background in motion graphics and editing uh, some of the tracking on the faces sometimes were wobbly but for the most part I think they did a really good job and honestly I thought for the opening scenes that that it, this would be definitely better on IMAX. Sadly, <laughs> we were only able to uh, get into the, the standard VIP theater because the IMAX was, uh, was super late and we didn't have time to wait for that long. So yes, if I could watch it again, I would go to IMAX. So rating uh, The Little Mermaid live action, honestly, I'm gonna give it a solid 8 out of 10. And again, it is one of the better examples on how to do an adaptation in a remake. It's definitely geared towards the fans and they know their target audience. Obviously, majority of it, it would be the kids who have grown up and of course they're wiser <laughs> over the years and it goes to show they actually put in a lot of thought into some of the the backdrop of the entire story of the, the like Caribbean trade and the storms and actually Ariel and Eric's a relationship could probably also be beneficial for both kingdoms and that actually makes sense <laughs> and it's actually really cool although it's never directly stated it was all all these little crumbs in the background and all, again in the backdrop of the story they actually also gave Eric a living breathing kingdom and uh, they actually have citizens uh, who are all very lovely and amazing yeah there's just a lot of life in the background of this movie uh, even under the sea where all these colorful creatures live and it's just such a spectacle to watch and if you have a daughter or little kids who are into mermaids or maybe even not into Disney films in particular uh, then this is a definite it must watch for you and I do recommend you bring your kids but be prepared to hear them singing along to part of your world for about a week or even more because again they made it relevant again they made it really cool and the performances again were just stunning and amazing and most of the cast did an absolute banger of a job so kudos to everyone who worked on this film and again there are some weak parts uh, with Ursula and King Triton in particular although I do love Melissa McCartney's take on Ursula and how they did the whole thing and her having a glowing blue tentacles uh, having to avoid her actually well I don't know is she really purple but you know all her scenes were in purple lighting which was really cool and yeah so what do you guys think have you seen the little mermaid i do recommend you guys maybe checking it out on imax but i'm not sure if you've seen it in imax please comment down below is it worth it because the opening sequence actually does have a lot of that almost 3d virtual 3d elements that i would think would look great in IMAX so what do you guys think comment it down below let us know what you guys think and as always it's me your bearded bro quicksilver 15 signing off peace